morning and welcome to Our Issues Milwaukee. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. Our focus this morning is on business. My first guest experienced a sudden job loss back in 2016. In the following year, she started her own business, TCM Communications, and even wrote a book. Clarine Mitchell is here today to inspire other entrepreneurs and give her expertise on how to shine online and actually uh, help you stand out professionally while doing so. How are you, Clarine? I'm great. So nice to be here with you. Thank you. Well, it's always a pleasure to have you around to share your expertise, as I said. So we know that uh, U.S. job losses due to COVID-19 are the highest since right. the Great Depression. Uh, so I wanted you here today to possibly help individuals who are looking for a way to get noticed by employers during a time when there are no face-to-face -face interviews right. or networking events going right. on. So let's talk a little bit about the social media site LinkedIn and how it works. Right, so LinkedIn is the only social media platform that's specifically for professional and business purposes. Mm -hmm. And so unlike Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, and all the other ones, they're great. They're fun, right? For social purposes. But when it comes to achieving our professional and business goals, LinkedIn is a platform created for that and created specifically to help users generate results. Yes. And as of May 2020, LinkedIn had 706 million yeah. registered members in 150 countries, which is unbelievable. Right. And that number is continuing to grow. And it's actually over 700 thousand million i believe is the latest number due in part to COVID. i believe you know as more people are working from home they're on their computers more and as you and the topic for today is is about those who have lost jobs people are using the platform more and so that's yeah. increasing the users and increasing the opportunities then for those who need results from the platform Okay, and like some of those other uh, social media sites that you mentioned, yeah. this is not just about putting up a really cute picture and seeing who no. comes across. There's a lot more that goes into getting noticed on a site like LinkedIn right. uh, by people who have the power to bring you in and give you a job that fits right into your resume. Most definitely. It takes more thought, more strategic approach to LinkedIn versus the other platforms. Because as you said, you can't just put, you know, that selfie photo, even though it may be <laughs> cute, on another platform. You have to have that professional headshot. And it doesn't necessarily be, have to be a studio professional headshot. We have these wonderful things called what smartphones now <laughs> that are mini computers right and so those mini computers we can use to take a good quality photo just have someone else do it in front of you against a solid not like my wall but a solid wall with, with nothing in the background to distract where the focus can be just on you and your face and you smiling of course and looking presentable but dressing the part as you would for an interview to take the photo so that you give that professional appearance to those who look at your LinkedIn profile. Makes a lot of sense. And of course, we're in a digital era. And depending right. on uh, when we grew up, I'll just right. put it that way, um, some <laughs> of us are not as savvy on social media as others. So right. luckily, you have written a book for people like me um, <laughs> who need a little extra help shining online. And I did mention it early on. It really does give you an opportunity to better understand uh, the whole platform and how to utilize everything that it uh, provides. Shine online with LinkedIn. That's Clarine right there on the cover. <laughs> And uh, how has, let's talk a little bit about your business before I go there. Um, how have things been for you uh, during the pandemic? Um, initially, it really rocked my business because most of my activity business-wise was in person. So I had events scheduled out to do in-person speaking, trainings, um, events, mm -hmm. and all of that was put to a halt. I still get cancellations of events that I was confirmed to do. And actually it was scheduled in October to be in Philadelphia and just that's turned virtual. So I've had to pivot my business and really instead of 
a smaller percent being virtual, the majority of what I do now exclusively really is virtual. Okay, so I wanted to ask you specifically because you've gone mm -hmm. as far as to write a book, how has LinkedIn been able to help you as an entrepreneur in everything that you do? Oh my goodness, it's been, even going back from when I was a job seeker, you mentioned in your intro of how in 2016 I had an unexpected job loss. And that experience is what really opened my eyes to the power of LinkedIn because mm -hmm. I started using the platform more because I needed a job. But as I used it more, I discovered more aspects about the platform and started getting results that I didn't anticipate. And the same thing is true even now as a business owner, I generate my leads. I generate my business in large part from my presence on LinkedIn. It's how people get to know me. It's how I get referrals. It's how people vet what I do because it's all displayed there on LinkedIn. Okay, so uh, what are a couple of things uh, that people need to keep in mind when creating a profile or going back to that profile that they did four years ago that they never paid attention to Forgot it was there, forgot the password. I understand because I've done that. Uh, <laughs> what do they need to do in order to stand out from all the rest? Very quickly, so especially if they're job seekers, the biggest thing is getting off the bench and not being a spectator or ignoring that LinkedIn profile to get results, you have to use it. So number one is optimizing your LinkedIn profile. That means completing all the key sections of your profile and then constantly building your connections to your network, creating content so you don't walk away and just think it magic happens. You have to have posts on a regular consistent basis. I say two or three times a week at minimum. And then also engaging, you know, building those relationships with people that will solidify them in your head for when they have an opportunity for you. It makes a lot of sense. I keep saying that because really, it's as convenient as it gets, especially under these circumstances. Most I just really wanted you to come on and remind people that it's there. And if they are in fact looking for a situation or a better situation right. for that matter, uh, LinkedIn certainly can help. And we've covered on the show how the pandemic has disproportionately affected people of color when it comes to health. And according to the Economic Policy Institute, the racial impact of the virus is deadly rooted are deeply rooted in historic and ongoing social and economic injustices, showing double and triple standards when it comes to education, income, health, and business. So with that said, uh, what are your thoughts as a minority-owned business? Oh my goodness, as a minority-owned business, hearing all that you said, you know, it hits home for me. Because again, when the pandemic first hit, my business, I had to do some soul searching, some quick pivoting to make sure my business wasn't falling in those statistics and, you know, having the options of closing. You know, we have to fight for our business. I tell my clients that as well. We have to fight for our businesses now like we've never done before because the, the odds are already stacked against us. And so we have to triple down on our efforts to make sure that we're staying alive and not just staying alive, but thriving. And LinkedIn yeah. is the way to do that. LinkedIn is social media. And we have the opportunity via LinkedIn to own our brands, to shine online, but 24-7, 365 days a week, weekends, evenings, holidays, we can leverage the platform to advance our brands. You have to make it a part of your daily activity, basically. Yes. So, uh, the National Bureau of Economic Research, they found that 41% of Black-owned businesses, that's some 440,000 yes. enterprises, have been shuttered by COVID-19, compared to just 17% of white-owned businesses. And that's actually... Uh, added on to new data that shows that African-American and Latino businesses are not only in danger of losing their businesses, but have been disproportionately denied relief loans established by the pandemic. So that's something to keep in mind as we go into our next segment. So if I 
could have you stick around. I'd like to take a quick break and we'll come back to talk about that. And we'll also uh, be joined by two young ladies who will share their entrepreneurial journeys as well. We'll be joined by creatives Tiffany Miller and Lilo Allen. And we'll come back with Lorraine Mitchell right after this. 